everyone, and welcome to day five of the Start Your Budget Here Challenge. Today is the last day. I am so proud of you for making it this far. Oh my goodness. Just imagine if you feel this much in control, if you feel this much better, this much more organized after five days, imagine how you're going to feel after five weeks, five months, or even five years, okay? I just want you to kind of picture this with me. I want you to try to imagine a world where you stop living paycheck to paycheck, okay? Just think about it for a second. All your bills are paid, your fridge is stocked, um, and you are actually able to catch your breath for the first time in a really long time. Imagine you're living in the moment, okay? You're not constantly juggling bills, you know, paying things in that grace period so you don't get charged the late fee or just budgeting in the late fee amount already. Guilty, I've done that. You don't have to guess if your card gets declined. You are no longer surviving. In fact, you are thriving. You are living your best life. Imagine becoming debt-free. Your interest isn't piling up anymore. Your student loans aren't still lingering behind you, haunting you everywhere you go. You are no longer paying for your past. In fact, you are saving up and getting to invest in your future for once. Imagine retiring comfortably. You aren't resting all of your retirement into social security, if it even exists by the time we reach retirement, right? You're investing wisely and you are rest assured that you're gonna be able to retire comfortably with a lot of zeros behind that dollar sign. Imagine that you're following your dreams. You're able to travel more. You're, you're checking things off that bucket list. Maybe you're able to quit that toxic job that you hate and maybe go to a job that you love even more. Maybe you're able to open a business or finally become a stay-at-home parent or only work part-time instead of full-time. Maybe you're able to shop more without feeling guilty. Maybe you're able to try that new hobby or give to the causes and the charities that you are so passionate about whatever your heart desires. Imagine that you're doing that. And the beautiful thing is that all of these things are possible and then some. All you have to do is decide to get serious about your money and get serious about your budget and start being intentional with the time that you have now. I want you to really think about that. And then I want you to ask yourself, how much longer are you willing to keep living in this chaos that has become normal? How much longer are you willing to keep putting those dreams on hold? Okay, I work with one-on-one -on -one coaching clients every single day. And it is amazing to me how much these women can accomplish in a 12-week coaching session. You can really do a lot with just a couple of months. The hard truth is, is that time does not care what we do. Time is going to pass one way or the other, okay? It is gonna be five years from now, five years from now. Whether you stay in the same job, whether you stay living paycheck to paycheck, or whether you don't, either way, it's gonna still be five years from now, okay? We might as well do something productive with the time that we have because the longer that we wait to get started, it just means that we're putting our dreams on hold even longer. And it is not so much to me about whether or not you're wasting your money or uh, you know how much are you wasting on paying interest on your debt or how much are you losing by not investing for retirement. That's not even the thing that breaks my heart the most. The thing that breaks my heart the most is the fact that you're wasting your one and only life. You are wasting time that you can never get back. That's what breaks my heart. And I don't want you to have to live in survival mode in chaos one more day. I want you to get more out of life. I want you to live that dream that you have in your heart. And I know that you want more out of life for yourself and for your family as well. So when this challenge is over today, I don't want you to just say, oh, challenge is over, right? I want you to take the next step. I want this challenge to be the jumping off point, the catalyst moment for a huge, huge journey to financial freedom, to living that life that you have always dreamed of, to not feeling like you wake up in survival mode every single day. That is why I named this challenge Start 
here, okay? I want this to be your jumping off point. So I want you to take action after today's challenge is over, whatever that looks like for you, okay? If you need help getting the rest of your budget organized, check out my budgeting worksheets, okay? If you want to enroll in my budgeting course or sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching, or if you already know what you wanna do and you just want to follow me for some more inspiration so you can continue to stay motivated and stay upbeat about this journey, do that as well, okay? All of the links are gonna be below in the description and they're also gonna be in the email that I sent you with today's challenge. Okay, so challenge number five, today's challenge is that we are gonna talk about prioritizing your savings. So with the chart that I shared with you yesterday, we see that there are three kinds of savings accounts in the budgeting world. That is your sinking fund, your emergency fund, and what I like to call your next goal fund. And today we are gonna set up all three of those. Step one is that we are gonna establish your sinking funds. This account is kind of a gray area of your budget. It covers those expenses that are too long-term to be in your spending budget. You don't kind of want that money just sitting around. And they're kind of too short-term to put in your savings. They're kind of like in the middle. You save up for things with all intentions of eventually spending that money money at some point. These are things that you're going to save up for over the course of a few weeks or a few months or sometimes even a couple of years. And then you get to spend that money guilt free and it is there ready waiting for you with permission to spend it all. So I recommend having either a separate debit card account or a separate savings account. Or if you're into doing cash, you can have separate cash envelopes to really keep this money from getting mixed up with your bills, your spending or your emergency fund. This is completely separate. So here are some expenses that could fall into this account. There are any of the calendar holidays. So this looks like Christmas or Hanukkah or Easter or Halloween or 4th of July or whatever holidays you celebrate. Then there are things like family holidays. So birthdays, anniversaries, Mother's Day, Father's Day, anything like that. Then vacations. Even if you don't have a specific trip planned, but you know that you would like to take a trip at least once a year or twice a year, pick an amount and then start to save up for it. Even if you don't have all of your plans in order yet, that way the money will be there when you are ready. Next is your home. So this could be regular maintenance, this could be repairs, or this could be big reno projects. Next is your vehicles. This could be for your regular maintenance. This could be things like renewing your registrations or random miscellaneous repairs that just pop up on unexpectedly. Pets is another good category. This can be things like their medicine, their grooming appointments, their yearly checkups, or even emergencies. A closed sinking fund, this is my favorite. You could shop seasonally, either like two or four times a year, or you could just be ready for back to school clothes. Lastly, anything random that you want to be prepared for. So I have some coaching clients that will do a sinking fund for things like their flood insurance, insurance, okay, or their life insurance, those big expenses that kind of just pop up. So whatever categories you decide, list them here in your worksheet. And again, I've given you only eight spots because I don't want you to overcomplicate this. So try to group things together when you can. Step one and a half is that we are going to organize these sinking funds, okay? So come up with a total amount that you want to spend. So for Christmas, say $1,200, right? Then list a starting balance if you already have some money set aside for this category. Next, list a contribution frequency. How often do you wanna contribute to this? Most commonly, people wanna contribute once a month to this account, but if you get paid bi-weekly, maybe you want to contribute twice a month. I've even had some clients contribute every single week or on rare occasion, even once a quarter. It's completely up to you. If you do have a side of the month maybe where not as many bills come out or maybe both partners get a paycheck around the same time, that's generally the time when we kind of want to contribute to the sinking funds, but you can do that math and see just where there's room to do them. Then the worksheet will help you calculate how much you need to contribute each time. So it'll go ahead and, for example, divide the $1,200 that you wanna contribute for Christmas by 12 months and tell you that you need to contribute $100 every single month. Then of course, you have a little notes spot in here if you wanna take notes of what is included in each of these categories. Like for example, which holidays come out of the gifts budget? Which seasons do you intend to 
buy clothes in or whatever else you need to remember. And if you get my digital budgeting system on the summary tab, you get this really great sinking fund summary chart where you can see all these numbers in one place and also keep up with your current balances as you are contributing money and also spending money. You know, money's going in and out. Sometimes it gets hard to keep up with how much you currently have available. This chart will help you with that. Step two is we are gonna establish your savings goals. So there are many different ways to kind of plan this out, set this up, organize all of this. So let's walk through it real quick. First of all, you have to have an emergency fund, okay? First and foremost, above everything else, you have to have an emergency fund. I know a lot of people recommend that $1,000 is a good emergency fund, and then other people, on the other hand, argue that it's not enough. I say $1,000 is a great place to start, but it is not a place to stop. Depending on your situation, again, if we were on a one-to-one -one coaching call, I could kind of help you through your specific situation a little better, but general advice is that start with a thousand dollars and work your way up to a three to six month emergency fund if you have a unstable job you work in sales you work on commission you are self-employed like your job is a little riskier maybe aim for a six to 12 month emergency fund depending on your situation and again this could be different for everyone but you kind of want to juggle and balance these savings goals with your debt payoff plan. Remember that both of them need to be a priority. So I always make sure to list emergency fund here on the worksheet, whatever you decide is your goal amount. And if you already have any money set aside for that, and then the worksheet will help you subtract the difference and help you remember how much you are needed to save right now. And you can give yourself a goal date. I always make sure that this emergency fund account is directly connected to my bills account. That way, if it is a true emergency, I can instantly have access to that emergency fund. Some of my clients even take it a step farther and they kind of keep that emergency fund as a buffer in their bills account. So they don't let their account go below $1,000 or $5,000 or even $10,000 sometimes. And that just helps them feel really secure and know that they could reach that money at any second. But again, this does take a level of discipline and I don't really trust myself with that sometimes. So I like to keep it in a separate savings account. Next on the list is what I like to call the next goal fund. So this could be anything from a home renovation project, saving up to cash flow a vehicle, saving up for a boat or an RV, um, saving up a down payment for a house or a piece of land or something like that. With these, we'll also list them on the worksheet, do the same thing with the description, the goal amount, the starting balance, and then the worksheet will help you know how much more you need to save and you can give yourself a goal date as well. But with these, I recommend having this money in a high yield savings account. I personally prefer Ally, not sponsored by them. I've just been using them for several years and I always recommend them. The cool thing about Ally is that it's not risky. It's not an investment or anything like that. It's just simply a savings account that is gonna earn you more money because they don't have a brick and mortar location. So they are able to pass that savings on to their customers and give you a higher interest rate. The only con to having a high yield savings account is that it does take one to three business days to transfer the money back and forth from your local bank account to Ally or Capital One 360 or whatever company you use. So this is not necessarily where you wanna have your emergency fund because you're on the side of the road with a flat tire, you've got a college tow truck, they're expecting for you to have a debit card to you know, pay them the two or $300 right then you need access to that money. But this is a really good place where you're waiting maybe a year, maybe a couple of years to save up for these bigger goals that you could be earning a little extra money with a better interest rate. So step two and a half is to organize these savings goals, list all of these details out on the worksheet. And the last step of this is to prioritize saving money for these goals whenever you have leftover money, whether that be your emergency fund or these bigger goals. Once you have your budget planned out for the whole entire year, you're gonna be able to see the budget periods where you have leftover money and then you can decide 
where does this money need to go? Does it need to go to debt payoff? Does it need to go to my emergency fund? Or can it go to these other big goals? What I love about my digital budgeting system is that you have a budget at a glance section at the top. And so you can very easily see when you're gonna have money left over. It also gives you a whole spot to plan out your sinking funds and gives you a spot to plug in these specific numbers for these specific savings goals. That way, when you write it down, you are so much more likely to actually transfer the money to savings, which is the whole entire point, right? All right, you guys, that is it. We are done with the Start Your Budget Here Challenge. I, and we, again, am so, so proud of you for even signing up for this challenge, for investing this time in yourself. I know that it's not always the easiest thing to do, but I am so proud of you. Okay, if you need any more resources, you wanna take any more next steps with me, I will list all of the links in the description below. Check out the digital budgeting system. It's only $20. It can help you organize your entire budget. Or if you wanna move forward with going into my budgeting course or going to one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, you'll also get the worksheets included in either one of those options. And of course, make sure that you are following me on social media. I will continue to cheer you guys on. I would love for you to share your progress with me, hit reply to one of my emails, shoot me a DM on Instagram, or leave me a comment in this YouTube video. That is all, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.